NASA is the killer of Martian life. How's that for a statement? Sounds like a conspiracy theory. However, part of the scientific community believes in this version. Its supporters are not so many, but the main thing is that they are there. Such thoughts seem extremely illogical because NASA vehicles that work on other planets are specially treated so that they cannot disturb extraterrestrial processes. To Mars, we have a special attention because the version that there once existed life there, or exists to this day, still does not leave our minds. But what if it is NASA that is responsible for life on Mars disappearing? And how did they do it? Let's travel back in time. In 1975, NASA launched the Viking space program to explore Mars. The Viking 1 and Viking 2 spacecraft were the first vehicles to end up on the red planet and gave us pictures of the Martian surface. The Viking mission spacecraft carried special instruments that were supposed to detect suspected living organisms. Viking remains the only spacecraft that had such a wide arsenal. And here, the interesting thing is that two experiments found traces of metabolism in some samples of Martian soil. Also, other experiments found traces of metabolism as well. However, the experiments did not find traces of organics, which is very important. Viking found some minor amounts of chlorine, but this was not given much importance at the time, as astronomers thought it was the residue of the material used to treat the vehicles. In general, the Viking mission did not reveal any signs of any life forms on the Red Planet. That's what the scientists thought. However, the opinion in this matter was not unanimous. The main comments were directly to the way the experiment was conducted. Let's consider in a little more detail how the experiment to detect metabolism took place. Samples of soil from the red planet were placed in a special solution with the radioactive isotope carbon-14. If there were any microorganisms in the soil, a metabolic reaction would occur. Before the mission tested this method with soil from different parts of the Earth, and in all cases, the experiment showed the presence of microorganisms. To make sure that the experiment would be accurate, they tested soil samples from the Moon, and here, the result was expectedly negative, so there were no errors. However, on Mars, the result was positive. The most interesting thing is that such a result was given by two apparatuses at once, which were in different places. At first, there was a version that such a result was obtained because the soil samples were affected by ultraviolet rays. Scientists took samples that were not exposed to ultraviolet light. Again, the result was positive. When the samples were heated to 160 degrees, the result was already negative. Metabolism was significantly weakened when the temperature reached 50 degrees. When the samples were placed for a long time in an environment with a temperature of 10 degrees, the result already became completely negative. In the end, the scientists concluded that there is no life on Mars, after all. And such curious results of the experiment have another explanation. However, there are still supporters of the version that then Viking 1 and Viking 2 could actually detect signs of life. It's just that scientists misinterpreted the results. As we mentioned earlier, the experiments did not detect organic compounds. There are several explanations for why this is what happened. The first is the most obvious, because the organics just aren't there. The second is that the experiment to detect organic compounds was not perfect, which means that the results were skewed. The third explanation says that the organics were not detected simply because it was destroyed in the process of heating soil samples. And some scientists believe that all the blame was water, without the participation of which did not do without experiments. The point is that water supposedly could not be added. Perhaps the microorganisms on Mars have adapted to life without water. If you start watering them, they will simply die, not being able to quickly adapt to new living conditions. This is somewhat similar to the organisms found in Earth's deserts, which take some moisture simply from the air. However, no full-fledged scientific work has been written concerning this issue. So, the opinion of most scientists has not changed. But NASA is also called murderers, not because they methodically destroyed life on Mars, but because they overlooked it or accidentally eliminated it in the very sample they analyzed. All this history tells us that we need to organize new missions to Mars to finally get to the truth, especially as Mars continues to be the center of everyone's interest. The Red Planet hides many more mysteries, and the desire to uncover them only fueled by experts from NASA in September 2023, the space agency published a new sound recording from Mars. This time, it's the sounds made by MOXIE, a special device mounted on the Perseverance rover.
We are working hard to detect signs of extraterrestrial life of at least the most primitive form. However, what if this extraterrestrial life has already come to us? For example, in September of this year, alien bodies were brought directly to the Mexican parliament. In general, Mexico is more progressive in this matter. Here already at the official level, such a discussion. It all started with the journalist Jane Mousen, who to everything else and an ardent supporter of the existence of UFOs. And here, he said that the discovered remains of mummies are representatives of extraterrestrial civilization, which came to us on Earth more than a thousand years ago. Two bodies of alleged aliens were brought to a parliamentary hearing. Adding to all this, for convincing video footage of unexplained anomalous phenomena, the aliens themselves were small in size, had oblong-shaped heads and three fingers on each hand. According to Jay Musan, the bodies were found near the ancient Nazca lines in southern Peru. How did NASA react to such a thing? Scientists have requested the bodies for examination to find out the exact truth. Both David Spurgle, who once headed NASA's independent UFO investigation, and Dan Evans, NASA's associate deputy administrator, have spoken out. Mausan, meanwhile, never provided a body. If we delve into Jay Mosan's biography, we learn that he has once claimed to have found alien remains in Peru. That was in 2017. However, it turned out then that they were just puppets. And here are the alien remains again, but this time already in Mexico's parliament. Julieta Fierro, a researcher at the Institute of Astronomy and the National Autonomous University of Mexico, was one of the most ardent skeptics of the case. Here's what she told reporters. Mausen says he spoke to the Virgin of Guadalupe. He told me that aliens don't talk to me the way they talk to him because I don't believe in them. Well, this man is clearly eccentric, but maybe he is telling the truth after all. There are many oddities in this story, such as why the remains were so easily removed from Peru, where they were supposedly discovered, since these are such valuable objects that could change the way we think about our history and science. And the interesting thing is that there were no Peruvian representatives at the presentation to the Mexican parliament. Then it turned out that not a single Peruvian scientific institution had found evidence of extraterrestrial beings when they examined the remains. You have to take into account that some of the DNA is impossible to determine at all, most likely due to the old age of the object. Mawson didn't give up. He has proof, provided the results of radiocarbon analysis, which allegedly indicated the huge age of object, and in the laboratory itself, say, that conducted research on a small sample. And again, we cannot talk about the correctness of the results because the idea of aliens have a different biology from ours, which is quite logical. So we end up with this case being another Mausen fantasy. So we have yet to find signs of life on other planets, just as extraterrestrial life has never come to our Earth. But science is moving forward by leaps and bounds. And who knows, maybe one day we will still get word of alien organisms in some galaxy. How soon do you think that will be? Or maybe we'll be visited by representatives of extraterrestrial civilizations someday.